Black Knights, Anti-Paladins, and Ill-Riggers. The iconic trope of a hero that succumbs to evil goes by many names in fantasy. In previous editions of D&D, they were referred to as Black Guards. In this Patreon requested build, I'm bringing you a multi-class build to have you play as a fallen champion powered by nefarious forces. Hey everyone, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack. This is Josh and thank you for watching. I want to give a huge thank you to patron Dungeoneer Drunken Yoda for this build request. Thank you for your continued support of the channel. If you would like to submit a request for a character build, become a Dungeoneer and support the channel on Patreon. You can find the link to the Patreon in the description below. Before jumping into the build, here are some things to keep in mind. I'm going to focus on levels 1 to 10 as most campaigns are played in this level range. And builds on this channel are built with a focus on the concept, but also will be viable for combat and roleplay. To play into the Dark Knight trope, there are three goals for this build. The first is that we will be drawing inspiration from the Prestige class featured in the 3.5 edition of D&D. It features many abilities found in a few 5th edition classes which I will dive into as we get into the level breakdown. My next goal is to be able to mix it up in combat and be a frightening martial warrior. We will have the tools to survive and deal damage on the front line, putting fear into our enemies. The last goal is that my plan is to make the Black Guard character an anti-hero instead of a complete villain. Black Guards are described as an archetypical villain, either being a hero who was swayed to the dark side or a warrior who has pledged himself to evil forces. In a game where the party is typically made up of heroes, a villain party member would naturally be problematic. With this in mind, the Blackguard build will be based around a hero who is powered by dark forces in order to achieve their heroic deeds. Taking a look at our ability scores, prioritize strength to support our weapon attacks and our defenses. The Blackguard evokes the imagery of a heavily armored fallen knight, wielding a giant weapon in one hand and casting spells in the other. A high strength score will allow us to do this. Follow that up with charisma to support our ability to spell cast and some of our skills. This character will be able to strike fear into those that confront them. When the Blackguard appears on the battlefield, the opposing forces gaze upon them with awe and fear. Then choose constitution for a healthy amount of hit points. Next is wisdom as this character relies on their instincts to survive, followed by intelligence and dexterity as our dump stat. While there are quite a number of race options that have lore that ties them to unsavory characters, using any of them is just pushing the character concept and build into the edgelord territory. Instead, I'm going to lean into the theme of a hero who has been twisted by dark forces and still attempts to do good. The fallen ASMR seems perfect for this. With Tasha's origin variant role, as an ASMR we can place a plus two into one ability score of our choice and a plus one into another. We also have the standard dark vision. As an ASMR we have the celestial resistance, healing hands, and light bearer racial traits, and for for being a fallen ASMR, we have the Necrotic Shroud trait. Celestial Resistance grants us resistance to radiant and necrotic damage. Healing Hands acts like a Lay on Hands variant, allowing us to heal a creature a number of hit points equal to our level as an action. Light Bearer grants us the Light Cantrip. Necrotic Shroud allows us to unleash necrotic energy whenever we attack. As an action, creatures within 10 feet of us must make a Charisma saving throw or be frightened of us. In addition to this, once per turn for 1 minute, whenever we hit a creature with a weapon attack or spell attack, we can add necrotic damage equal to our level to the damage. For the background, I chose an option that ties this black art back to a time where they were morally just. I went with the knight variant of the noble background. As a knight, we have proficiency with the history and persuasion skills, a gaming set of our choice, can choose a language to speak, and I also went with the variant feature, retainers, to have some loyal henchmen at our side to do the mundane task. History reflects our knowledge of alliances and conflicts between the nation we swore to protect. Persuasion represents our natural charisma. We have a natural magnetism that draws people in and are capable of using it to our advantage. Getting into the level breakdown, Starting at level 1, our Black Guard will be starting off as a Paladin, as many of the Paladin's class features are identical or similar in theme to the abilities of the 3.5 Black Guard. A thing to note, while Paladins in previous editions of the game were morally just and on the side of good, in 5th edition, the Paladin's concept is reworked to have them champion a set of ideals that allows players to branch out beyond the lawful good expectations of their predecessors. Besides the usual Paladin proficiencies, at level 1 I chose to have proficiency with the Intimidation and Athletic skills, and we also gained the Divine Sense and Lay on Hands features. Intimidation is the embodiment of our presence. We put fear into those around us. Whether it's on or off the battlefield, we will make those that attempt to stand in our way regret that they ever tried. Athletic not only reflects our physical prowess, but could also be an indication of our ability to overcome the physical corruption of wielding dark magic. Divine Sense will act similar to the Black Guard's ability to detect good, but just expanded upon. While Detect Good only allowed them to detect Celestials, Divine Sense will also allow us to detect fiends or undead within 60 feet of us. Lay on Hands is an even more powerful version of our racial ability Healing Hands, giving us another non-magical way to heal allies. But considering this character is a bit more selfish, we will be using Lay on Hands or Healing Hands to keep ourselves in the fight and heal ourselves. 
With level 2, we are still riding that paladin train and we pick up a fighting style, divine smite, and spellcasting features. For our fighting style, I went with defense to make us harder to hit. This will give us flexibility in our weapon choices as we are able to wield a two-hander or go with a one-hander and a shield. This reflects our resilient nature, whether that's from our martial training or power through magic. Divine Smite is the 5th edition equivalent to the Black Guard Smite Good ability, but instead of just doing additional damage to good aligned creatures, we will be dropping fat damage on anyone that comes our way at the cost of a spell slot. We can also start casting first level spells and here are my suggestions. Compelled Duel, Detect Magic, Protection from Evil and Good, and Wrathful Smite. At level 3 we can pick our subclass and I went with the Conquest Paladin. While Oathbreaker seems to be the logical choice and if you want to play a Paladin that Bella Darkness, it fits within the narrative of the 3.5 Black Guard. I chose Conquest Paladin in large part to their fear inducing subclass features and a slight change in the fantasy it brings to the idea of the Black Guard. We are part of a secret order of knights, wielding forbidden magic to combat evil. As a third level Conquest Paladin, we gain the Divine Health and Channel Divinity features and also an expanded spell list. Divine Health makes us immune to disease. With our Channel Divinity, we can choose to use Conquering Presence to frighten a target for a minute or Guided Strike to add a plus 10 to our attack rolls. For our expanded spell list, we will have Armor of Agathis, Command, Bold Person, and Spiritual Weapon. Next at level 4, we have the option between an Ability Score Increase or a Feat and I went with the Ability Score Increase choosing Strength in order to support our attack rolls and damage as well as being able to support the use of Heavy Armor. Maximizing our Strength Score is a priority in order to get our Fear Inducing combo to be consistent. For level 5, we can attack twice now with extra attack and we can cast second level spells and here are my recommendations. Find Steed, Magic Weapon, and Zone of Truth. With level 6, we gain the Aura of Protection feature, which will help us protect our allies from danger, letting anyone within 10 feet of us able to add our Charisma modifier to a saving throw they make. When we hit level 7, we are taking our final level into Paladin and we pick up the Aura of a Conquest feature, which is an evil aura similar in theme to the Black Guard's Aura of Despair, but instead of causing a debuff to an enemy forces in your area, Aura of a Conquest affects frightened creatures that are within 10 feet of us. It reduces their speed to zero and deals additional psychic damage to them if they start their turn within the Aura. Aura of Conquest encapsulates the fear we strike into enemies. Using this in combination with our Conquering Presence Channel Divinity, our target will stop in its tracks out of pure fear. At level 8, we are jumping into the Warlock class to turn it up a notch and embrace the dark as a warlock, we can choose our subclass and I went with Undead as it reflects our allegiance to a lich or other powerful undead being that wants us to be their champion to lead their undead horde. Most notably, as a level 1 warlock, we gain the former Dread subclass feature and can cast spells through pack magic and our subclass grants us an expanded spell list. Former Dread completes our fear inducing combo. As a bonus action, we can activate an undead form that grants us temporary hit points and makes us immune to being frightened. But above all else, whenever we hit a creature with an attack, they must make a wisdom saving throw and if they fail, they are frightened of us. Former Dread in combination with our aura of conquest makes it more reliable to keep a target from moving away. With our expanded spell list, we will have access to Bane and False Life with this build. And for our cantrips and first level spells, here are my recommendations. Eldritch Blast, Minor Illusion, Arms of Adar, and Hex. Hitting level 9 as a level 2 Warlock, we have the option to choose two Eldritch Evocations. I went with Devil's Sight to see into Magical Darkness, and Eldritch Mind to give us advantage on concentration checks. And finally, for level 10, we can choose a Pack Boon, and I went with Pact of the Chain to get a Henchman Familiar to toss that help action in combat to grant us advantage on our attacks as well as help us scout outside of combat. We can also cast second level spells and here are my suggestions. Borrowed Knowledge, Crown of Madness, Darkness, and Misty Step. Now let's take a look at our pros and cons. For our pros, the combination of Aura of Conquest and Former Dread make you a formidable tank. As long as enemies are failing their saves against your fear inducing attacks, they aren't going anywhere. A small negative to note as higher level enemies can be flat out immune to being frightened, shut this interaction down. Another pro is that we will always have Divine Smites ready to go between short rests. While the Paladin spell slots recover every long rest, leveling into Warlock grants us pack magic which recovers spell slots on a short rest. We can use those short rest spell slots to pack a punch a little longer than other paladins. Now for our cons. This build is a bit of a late bloomer. It's not until level 8 that our multi-class combo is realized. Until then we are just a straightforward paladin smiting a path through our enemies. The last con is that we will only be getting one ability score improvement in order to make this level 10 build work. Needing a solid strength score because our fear combo relies on weapon attacks, it leaves no real room for feats unless we went the variant human route for our race choice. With that said I want to hear from you. How would you build a Dark Knight character? Let me know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.